This is a brand new 371 square meter new build that we've recently completed in Wallaceville Upper Hutt. Coming up, we'll show you a time lapse of the build, we'll take a look at the floor plan, and we'll review the plans in detail explaining how we tackled some of the tricky problems on site. Stick around to the end of the video to see the entire finished home. It would be real common for a client to be spending between a year and two planning and consenting and purchasing the land and all of those things before we even show up on site. We like to meet our clients as early on as possible in that process and work with them while they go through the consenting and planning phase. Let's talk about this section. It is a 1200 square meter lot in a new subdivision area here in Upper Hutt. One of the larger lots, it also comes with its very own protected totra tree. This dictated what could be built on the land. You can see here the totra tree is marked here and that is a no build zone. The house is tucked over here and the outdoor living is going to go here which will get the afternoon and evening sun and a second garage will go over here on the other side of the Totra tree. Reasonably flat site, one of the first things we did is got to work and cleared all of the grass and prepared the driveway and slab areas. This was a reasonably flat, easy site to prepare. The ground was reasonably rocky and we had to take a large amount of that away and replace that with compacted base course. But the good news is this is one site where we didn't need any piles. So once the digger had prepped the base course, we could crack on with the slab. You can see here the foundation design for the main house. We're doing a rib raft slab. Few ins and outs where there's buttress walls. Reasonably large slab, 267 square meter ground floor. And the garage over here was 52 square meters. All up, we're pouring just over 319 square meters of concrete. A lot of boxing, a lot of preparation, nothing too scary for our guys, and they cracked into it, and before you know it, we've got a slab. So good to have concrete down and a huge milestone on site. Now that we've poured a slab, we can set frames up on site. The lower level frames are delivered from our pre-nailer and we can get to work standing those straight away. Let's take a look at the floor plan. Coming in the front doors here, your breath is taken away by a large double story entrance way with stairs in the back and a huge window letting in lots and lots of light. Off to the left, we have the living areas and off to the right, we have the downstairs bedrooms. We have a beautifully tiled main bathroom on the left of the hallway here. Two generous sized bedrooms for kids or guests and a downstairs master. The downstairs master has its own tiled ensuite and a very large walk-in wardrobe. Moving down towards the garage, we have a laundry, and then we have a workshop area with its own kitchenette, another downstairs bathroom, that's three bathrooms downstairs, and a nice, generous size double garage. You can never make your garage too big. This one is eight meters wide by seven meters deep. Back over on the left of the entranceway, you have your kitchen on the right with a pantry tucked in behind that, huge amount of storage. Dining room in the northwest corner of the building soaks up all of that afternoon sun. You have a formal living room in front of a gas fire, and also you have a TV room tucked off to the bottom here. Moving 
on up the stairs we have a master suite huge large room seven meters deep by four and a half meters wide large generous walk-in wardrobe and another tiled bathroom that's the fourth bathroom of the build and really nice finishing in here we also have a skylight over the dining area and then over across the driveway behind the protected tree we have a 52 square meter garage with roller doors and the fifth bathroom on the property its own loo so you don't have to run back to the main house the idea is, is this to be a bit of a workshop space to store and work on cars Here you can see the mid-floor plan and these SED beams in here. SED stands for Specific Engineer Design. This one is above the window. There's a big steel beam in here carrying the load of the upper floor because the upper floor finishes above the bathroom and bedroom below. We've got a couple of SED lintels. Lintels go above doors or windows. We also have a beam along here. Again, because the upper floor doesn't finish directly above a lower level wall, this beam takes the upper level floor load, wall load and roof load of this entire wall and spreads it to this point here, this point here and this point here. Engineers will do a bunch of calculations and that all gets put together with our consent drawings. Then us builders on site, we just follow the plans. In here, we're using 290 by 45 SG8 joists that would also be known as 12 by 2 the big suckers. Here you can see the roof plan for the lower level. We have to get all of that in before we can put the scaffold up and start building the upper level. And then we put the upper level roof on. From here our boys can crack on with cladding. We go pre-wrap, put the windows in, flashings, and this job here was a mix of three claddings, some sections of rock coat on cavity. We have the hard as rock schist, and this was individually laid over fiber cement sheets that we screwed tags into. We have the linear oblique skinny wide random pattern installed vertically. You can see here in the original drawings it was going to go for a dark look. After driving around a few subdivisions and working with our design team, the client opted to go for a much lighter look. We've gone for a natural bronze looking stone. The weatherboards are painted with resin white pointer and the rock coat is a bright white color. We think it looks really sharp. Once the cladding goes on, the building is now closed in. This is also the perfect time for you to go ahead and click subscribe and help us build up our following. Once the building is closed in, but before we do any permanent work inside, this is the perfect time for the client to walk around with our plumber and Sparky make a bunch of decisions about exactly what's going where. We'll go over details such as tile niches, vanity mirrors, where are electrical outlets going, what's getting run in the kitchen. This house also had some smart home features such as cameras and alarm systems and running all of the electrics like the gate and all those cool things. This is the perfect time to think about whether you need outdoor plugs or a spa and where your lighting is also going inside and outside. This is the easiest time to make those decisions and run all the wires for that. 
Once we've pre-wired and pre-plumbed, we'll do insulation. From here, we do jib, plaster, and the finishing trim goes on the wall. Then we can get the painter in and it starts to really feel like a home. Once the walls are painted, we can get the flooring down, the kitchen gets installed and the bench top gets measured. There's normally a little bit of downtime from installing kitchen cabinets to installing the bench. This is because the stone bench guys come in and using a real fancy laser, they precisely measure all of the walls, all of the cabinets. They put that all in a computer, that gets sent to the stone factory and that gets cut. All of those finishing elements come in On all our jobs, we like to create a landscaping plan right at the start. It gives our clients a really good direction to go in. We started preparing the concrete driveway area and the massive deck off the dining room. Deck has gone down and is looking really sharp and our client will finish off some of the details such as the pergola over spa and the outdoor fire. The boys also put up a boundary line fence along the back of the property and we had a really sharp looking fence along the front. Which was a combination of solid and slatted panels. In subdivisions like this, it's really common to have to submit a landscaping plan to the main developer. That's a really common covenant in new developments and it's a way of maintaining the look and feel. It keeps the development cohesive. Uh, basically, you're making sure no one puts up an ugly fence. Now let's take a look around the finished home.
it was a privilege to build this home for our client. If you haven't, go ahead, click subscribe to follow along with more of our start to finishes.